And I'm Joanne from For Better, For Worse. Today, we're really excited. Um, we have um, Liz Oren, uh, a, a professional groomer and handler, uh, to tell us how to keep our pets uh, very uh, quaffed while we're in that quarantine. So uh, thank you, uh, Liz, for coming out. Um, so we wanted to ask you to um, tell us how you got into grooming and what do you like about it and introduce what you do. And I know you've done, you've traveled internationally uh, grooming. So uh, tell us all about that. Uh, so hi, thank you for the introduction. Yes, that is me. I am Liz. Um, some of you probably know me because um, I do train at Four Year Canine, both confirmation uh, and agility. Um, not so much right now, obviously, <laughs> under the circumstances. Um, but yeah, so I started grooming um, actually to, to get my way through college, ironically. Um, I was going to school for radiology. And I, you know, was working part time at PetSmart and they were like, come bathe. And I was like, how hard could that be? Very <laughs> hard. <laughs> it was very hard. Um, you know, but I loved it. I really enjoyed it. And so then there was a, you know, opening to go to PetSmart's Grooming Academy. And I, my boss sent me and I was actually kind of good at it. You know, and I was like, okay, this is cool. So I'm still going to school and I'm now grooming. Um, and I was running actually group training classes at PetSmart. I do have a background in canine etiology. Um, I actually was more focused on training than grooming. Ironically, we can see what path they chose. <laughs> <laughs> um, I learned that I liked the dogs a lot more than I liked the people. I opted to no longer, you know, go to school for radiology. I began focusing very heavily on my grooming career. I learned that there were grooming competitions and I began my competitive career. Uh, in my very first show, I placed in everything that I entered. Um, I was nominated up and coming competitive groomer of the year. Oh, I, wow. yeah. Um, yeah, which was crazy. I was taking group placements, so over the highest division, uh, in a lower division, which was just crazy. And that was with actually uh, Jordy, who you're going to see a little bit later. Um, you know, and then I I bought a poodle to do my grooming competitions, and I said, hey, I'll show him. And now when I said that, when I bought a dog, a poodle no less, I had never gone to a dog show. I had never... Oh. <laughs> I had absolutely, I, I had never even seen what a poodle looked like for a dog show. I was clueless. So for me to go in and just, of course, I'm going to buy this dog. Of course, I'll show it. Like, that's no big deal. Uh, it kind of was. Uh, anyone who has not seen a poodle done up uh, in show, yeah. health, it's, it's a lot. It's one of the hardest trims out there. Um, so basically I started my career, uh, you know, in full force and I very quickly gained recognition in the industry in my prime since I, I took last year off. Um, I was number one in the state, number 11 in the country for my competitive grooming. I show poodles and Scotties mostly in confirmation. Those are the breeds that I specialize in. Um, but I also have shown a Brittany, um, and, uh, various other dogs I've helped with, things like that. So, uh, and then most recently, um, I teamed up with Yves Saint Bernard, uh, which is an Italian-based company that has a branch here in the U.S., and I'm a certified pet esthetician, so I specialize in skin and coat issues, um, you know, through their program, and I'm one, I, we've got a little bit higher number now, but I believe I am one of three or four in Illinois, um, so, you know, we are hard to come by and it is a very specialized field of study. No, oh, awesome. Um, awesome. Awesome. So, um, all right. So I'm going to, uh, have, um, uh, really quickly, Joanne's going to start your line of questioning, but you guys, those of you who are listening and all that, um, if you have questions or you want anything specific, um, you know, Liz is here to to educate us and kind of give us some basic ideas while she is a uh, pretty 
uh, heavy duty professional groomer. Uh, she does help the rest of us with our dogs. Uh, Liz has groomed my shepherds and and my lab, and um, and she's done um, she's done very difficult dogs to nail trim. She's she's done it, uh, so she's wonderful. Uh, I have uh, I've uh, used her personally, so I can. I, she's highly recommended, which is how um, I asked her to do this for us to talk about how to. Um, and Melanie says four says hi. <laughs> Yeah, speaking, for the, speaking of difficult for nails. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> speaking of which, he's their king. Anyway, so if you have any questions about different things as we go, if we don't, if we have a question of as we go through the uh, the show, if you have any questions that maybe we don't get to or we didn't answer, please uh, let us know that you're there and let us know that you're, you know, what what the question is, and we'll try to get the best to answer uh, answer your question. So, um, all right, Joanne, go. <laughs> So very interesting about the, the skin and coat issues. So one of the first questions is, and I'm sure it differs by breed as well, but how often should you bathe your dog? So a big thing about bathing your dog, if you are using appropriate products, you can bathe your dog very regularly. Um, short coated dogs, so vishlas, um, you know, that single layer of hair, pit bull types, you know, the type of dog that does not have undercoat, but has that very short, fine hair, they need a lot of oil, okay? So that's where a lot of people have the misconception that bathing those short-coated dogs causes dry skin, and that's not actually true. What's causing that dry skin usually is a subpar product. Uh, most people only shampoo, so you're stripping away those oils. And if you're not conditioning and replacing those oils, you are going to run into problem, regardless of coat type. Um, you know, so really, you cannot overbay the dog so long as you're using appropriate products. Um, my show coats, so my poodles, they're bathed out at minimum once a week. If they get dirty, they get another bath. Um, you know, dogs that I'm doing, um, case studies on, or if they have severe allergies, skin infections, you know, true topical problems, um, I'll bathe them every day. You know, they're, especially using the Yves Saint Bernard product, they're specialized products that are very good and, and provide so much benefit to the coat. So for a short haired dog, Realistically, if you want to bathe your dog once a week, that is no problem, but make sure you are replacing that oil. Um, typically, you know, they're pretty much wash and wear. They don't need a ton of grooming, um, but just think about this. Your skin on, on your dog turns over every three weeks. So here's your layer of skin, three weeks, three weeks, three weeks, three weeks, and it builds just like with us. So if you're not washing away that dying and, and decaying lower layers, they do get a little stinky and it is kind of gross. So I do, rec <laughs> I do recommend still regular bathing. Um, for your medium coated dogs, so your shepherds, your labs, you know, a true double coat, they need more hydration, not as much oil, but they do still need good oil in that coat. And I always say with shedding dogs, wash, blow dry a lot. If they shed, the more you wash them and get that coat out, the less cleaning you have to do. And I don't know about you guys, but it's a lot easier to clean and wash a dog than to try and vacuum the house every day. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you just call me, Nancy. It's fine. Yeah, I was like, I'll just say goodbye to you. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, but again, you're, you're not going to overbathe the dog so long as, again, you're using a good quality shampoo and conditioner. Um, now, as far as your longer coated dogs, uh, poodles, shih tzus, uh, bichons, uh, your, your doodles, so your doodles of, of all sorts can fall into multiple categories. There are some doodles that are double coated. There are some that are more of like a longer coat. There are some that are more of a single or a harsh coat. Um, so that is a more dog by dog basis because there's not really 
a standard that's being read to, so you are getting copious amounts of coat types. So if you, if you do have a doodle and you're listening to these tips, um, you may have to kind of figure out what kind of coat your specific dog has. Um, but for long coated dogs, keeping their hair healthy and hydrated is what is most important. So you're going to have less, less oil, more hydration for those longer coated dogs. Um, and when I say longer coated, it doesn't necessarily mean a dog with long hair. Uh, it is the coat type. So even Savage here would be a, a longer coated dog, even though his hair is, is quite short currently. Um, Yves Saint Bernard makes it really super easy. I love their um, just basic traditional line. You can kind of see here. This is their short coat shampoo. They have short, medium, and long coat in shampoo and conditioner. Um, so that takes the guesswork out of it, which I absolutely love. My clients love it. I do uh, sell it retail to a number of clients because it's just, you know it's a top quality product and you're getting exactly what your coat type needs, which is mm -hmm. so important. Is there any, uh, if you don't bathe your dog pretty regularly, is there, I mean, and aside from the stinky part, if they don't have stinky issues, uh, is there a, a, a detriment to not bathing them all the time? There can be. Um, so if you have a dog that's prone to matting, of course you're going to get matting and uh -huh. uh, underneath those mats, or uh, if you have a dog that is a double coat, if they get really clumpy, you know, shedding bits, um, those can actually hold moisture. And so if they get wet from the rain or a puddle and it's air drying, it can cause hot spots. Um, you know, skin infection, fungal infections, um, you know, it's, it's vital. I mean, I always say, think about if you didn't shower for a month. You know, it's one of those things where some people, I mean, probably could, you know, if, if they're not, you know, super active or going out a ton, but then if you have somebody that's exercising every day or swimming, yeah. you know, <laughs> exactly. So I do want to say take into account your dog's lifestyle. You know, if your dog is only out for two minutes to pee and, and really stays pretty clean, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's very case by case. But at bare minimum, I always say regardless of hair, coat type, lifestyle, once a month just to make sure you're cleaning off those, you know, dead and dying skin cells. Plus, with our blow dryers and having our hands on your, on your dog, I can't stress to you enough the number of medical issues that I have found. Um, lumps, bumps, bruises. I found a leftover staple in a new feed from, from a knee surgery. Um, you know, ear infections. I mean, really, there's so much that goes on at that skin level. And our blow dryers separate that hair out. We're in all the nooks and the crannies. And we are able to really help you know, monitor your pet in a way that a typical pet owner, you know, can't. You can't get down to the skin the same way that we can. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So just curious, Liz, I know you were mentioning, uh, what was the name of the product that you mentioned? Uh, Eve San Bernard. Okay. So we can share that later. Um, so anything that you could buy in, say, like a Walgreens or a grocery store is probably not a high-quality product. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So what about like a, a Petco? Have you seen anything in like the chain stores that is high enough or would you say order online? I would say order online, um, you know, in a pinch. Um, you know, I believe Petco specifically does sell uh, Esprit, which is a professional line of products. A number of grooming salons use them. Um, but it's one of those things most of even what, you know, your big box stores sell, I don't love because even their conditioners either are too heavy because there are, there are two types of, of conditioners, essentially, uh, humectants and emulsifiers. And most conditioners have emulsifiers where uh, Yves Saint Bernard has humectants, which basically means that it's going to pull in even more moisture. So instead of like, think of a hand lotion, if you put lotion on your hands and, and you and they're gummy and they're like have that filmy coating, that's what most conditioners are going to do. And it actually prevents moisture from getting in because it's locking in the moisture you already have. Hmm. 
Okay, that makes sense. Plus, um, if you're rinsing uh, an emulsified conditioner, it takes a really long time. <laughs> and it's really hard to get rinsed out of the coat, especially in a home environment. Okay, all right. Um, so Deb asks, do dogs have to be blow drying or is air drying acceptable? Air drying is acceptable as long as you're brush and comb afterwards. Um, I always just like blow drying because I don't, I don't like wet dogs running around my house. Uh, but most of my dogs have like a ton of hair. So, <laughs> you know, he's actually uh, my shortest haired dog and this is really short for my dogs. Um, you know, but even if you put them by a box fan just to help them dry, um, if they're air drying too much, again, you know, it can cause, you know, fungal growth, mildew, things like that, if they have, you know, matting or packed coat. So just be mindful. It's it's not necessarily bad, um, but just don't overdo it. Yeah. Okay. I did, put, right. I did put the link uh, for the products. Um, and people can probably contact you, which I will put your information on the uh, towards the end, uh, so they can uh, touch base with you if they need products as well. Yeah, and then the company too, I actually spoke with them before I called you guys uh, for this. Um, they are actually offering a 10% discount um, if anyone is interested in ordering. Um, info at usambernardusa.com, just to place the order and they'll get you a discount on that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mari, I see you. We're going we're gonna to kind of come back. Um, so uh, Deb had a follow-up question. Do you brush them wet or do you wait for them to dry first? You could do either. Um, wet okay. hair is a little bit more elastic, so you know there's no problem brushing them wet. Sometimes it's easier to get down to the skin on a longer coated dog. Um, so either is fine. Okay. Um, and so speaking of brushing, how often should you brush a dog and like do teeth? And if you're using a brush, how long does a, a good brush last for? Um, I know that's a multi-part question, but can you sort of talk about um, just kind of brushing in general and the different coats of dogs? Yeah, so I actually, let me relocate that dog. I have a bunch of tools. So I'll get them kind of laid out and then get you guys turned to where you can see them, hopefully, without yep. dropping my phone. Because it is not in a case. <laughs> So we'll go from short, medium, long again, just because that is uh, typically the easiest way. So again, your Vishlas, Wine Riders, uh, anything with a really tight single layer, um, you know, the main thing you're going to need will be a bristle, nylon bristle. You can get something like this, uh, Sally's, Walmart, anything, and you can see that's, you know, mm -hmm. like, like a shoe brush. Um, and then a curry comb, zoom groom. Um, you can, again, I mean, I'm a big fan of like Farm and Fleet to get a lot of my product like this. Um, horse curry combs, they're fantastic. Um, so if you were to brush a short coated dog, so let's pretend I'm a short coated dog, you know, you can use your curry comb to break up all that loose hair first. And then it'll it basically be snowing. I mean, short coated dogs for having almost no hair Oh my goodness, do they shed. Holy cow. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> um, you know, so you brush, you can do circular. You don't want to overdo it though, because with this rubber curry and any type of curry, um, you can, you know, almost do like a, like a rug burn just because of the friction. So mm -hmm. don't overdo it. Um, once you've got them kind of all fluffed up and scruffed up and, and loosened, that's where you want to come in with your bristle brush. What I like to do... Um, this is actually uh, argon oil, uh, again from Yves Saint Bernard, it smells delicious. Um, a couple drops, since I'm brushing me, couple drops, put it over your dog, and then you just brush that in with that bristle, bristle nylon brush. And what that does, that seals in the moisture, soothes the skin and coat, and then the bristles actually help close up that cuticle. So it smooths and it shines and it gives it a beautiful luster. Oh. For your medium coated dogs, so shepherds, labs, 
you know, things like even like uh, turves, border collies, you know, they have kind of that longer furnishing, but they're still a double coated dog. Um, there's a couple different things that I like. I, I do love a good slicker brush for them. This is the Chris Christensen big slicker brush. I love the tines on this are very long and they're very effective. Um, this is a $60 brush. This is not an inexpensive brush. I probably have four or five of these. This is my favorite brush. I will sooner go to work without scissors before I forget this brush. <laughs> that is how much I love it. Um, it is worth the investment. For a typical pet person, this will, long, this will last until you lose it. Um, in a professional setting, I've had probably, actually I think it's upstairs, but I've probably had the same brush for four or five years and it still looks brand new. They are okay. very effective. They're very high quality product. Um, 10 out of 10, just, just, just buy it. Don't tell your you know, husband or your spouse how much it costs. Just put it in an Amazon box with something else. Nobody will be the wiser. Um, so Liz, especially for doodles. Liz, what does, a, what does a brush like that run? Because I know you can buy like a slicker from Farm and Fleet for like $7 and it seems all bent up after you use it a couple of times, so. Yeah, this guy, like I said, it's $60. It's not, okay. it's, it's not inexpensive. <laughs> right. Um, but again, I'm a big advocate of quality over quantity. Anything I recommend, it may be a little bit more expensive up front, but it will last you. Mm -hmm. and, that, okay. you know, and that's imperative. Um, to soften the blow, this is also available on Amazon, <laughs> and I think this is like $7. <laughs> um, this is actually one of my favorite undercoat rakes. This is a miracle coat and you can see it's got, you know, little, little yeah. teeth. they don't rotate or anything. Um, fantastic for pulling out dead undercoat, um, on all lengths of hair. Um, even on my poodle, actually, he carries undercoat and I will use this to help pull out that undercoat. Um, you know, and another similar tool, but this is much more effective for like your labs and things like that. This is an undercoat rake. This is by oh. Candice. I do recommend this to a lot of clients in lieu of a Furminator. I oh, do okay. not recommend Furminators at all. Okay. Um, they tear up the top coat. They cause a lot. I can almost, any dog that comes on my grooming table, I can tell you whether or not their owner uses a Furminator. Oops. <laughs> uh huh. Yes, Nancy. <laughs> uh, this is just much because it actually pulls out the undercoat and does very little damage to your top coat. Um, and this is like fourteen dollars. So really, this is the only massively big ticket item. And Liz, oh, yes, go ahead. The slicker brush. Uh, Linda Gurr wants to know what what brand is that? This is the Chris Christensen. Big slicker. There is a black version and a coral version. The only difference, and I do have them both, is the density of tines. Hmm. So the black is less dense than the coral. I recommend the coral. Dense is better. Just more, the more brushing power, the better. Okay. Um, um yeah. Well, you were talking about that argon oil before. Somebody's asking, um, would, does closing that cuticle help decrease shedding, or is it just helping with the oils in their skin? A little bit of both. I have found, um, you know, on my shedding dogs that I grew more regularly and, and have added the argon oil into their routine, their skin and their coat is much healthier, and they're just able to kind of drop out a little bit more of that shedding undercoat. You know, because the, the skin is healthier and the, and the coat around it is healthier. And it's like, all right, we're done with you. Bye. <laughs> um, and, and it may just be, again, the, more the frequency of the grooming and, and having these fantastic products. Um, but it's, I, I would say yes, but that's more of an opinion, not a factual-based answer. <laughs> okay. And, uh, that for, that, for what that's worth. Yeah, the, can you say the brand of the undercoat rake again, too? Yes. So this, the black one is Miracle Coat. 
undercoat rake um, available on Amazon. Uh, Andis also has an undercoat rake similar to this. So if you can't find this one, Andis does have one that's, that looks similar to this. It's just in the Andis colors. Um, and then again, this is the Andis undercoat rake, better for your labs, shepherds, things like that. Um, this is better for your border collies and, and what have you, just because of the, the use. Perfect. Okay, and then I see you have a you have a comb left. I always have a comb, um, even for your medium coated dogs, so your shepherds and things like that. If you're coming in with a comb, uh, especially on your fine fine toothed end, and you're combing through that, you're going to pull out even more of that dead and dying undercoat. So even if you have a shepherd or things like that, still invest in a comb. I promise you, the final touches. You know, before I, I do my bristle with the argon oil, I run a comb even through, um, you know, shedding type dogs. It's, it's absolutely vital. Um, you know, I, I have a really wide comb that I've actually run a rubber band through to help pull out more of the undercoat in the Scotties that I show because we need their top coat, you know, nice and harsh. Um, and then long coated dogs. Basically, the main thing you're going to need for them is a slicker brush and a comb, and then uh, a, a bit of a brushing spray. So I like the Atami brushing spray, um, which again acts like the argon oil for the shorter dogs, but in your longer coat because this is, you know, a nice, nice mist, and this is actually a two-phase spray, so it has oil in it. So what is that again? This is the Atami 270. A tiny you can see this is, I buy this by the case. If I could <laughs> sleep with this at night, I probably would. It is my, like, I could, it is my fate. I use it on everybody. I use it on myself. I'll be real. <laughs> it's, nice. it's so hydrating. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay. And then um, Pam's asking, can you spell the name of the grooming tool to use on labs instead of the Furminator? Andy's Andy's undercoat rake. It's there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Andy's undercoat rake. It's there. It's on you can get that on Amazon. Okay. All right. Um, so I know you sort of went through that. These uh, uh all of your tools. These are these are all your must-haves if you for different coated breeds. Yes. This is something you'd say is really worth the money. Yes. And again, you know, invest in good equipment. Um, you know, this, this slicker, okay, this one's been through the ringer, okay, um, you can see the tines have been squashed. <laughs> this slicker is probably eight years old. This was one of the absolute first brushes I got when I learned the difference between good quality professional equipment and my $8 slicker brush. And it's still kicking. It's still, and I mean, I use this, this is my, this is actually out of my everyday work bag. I have, I have a new one. That's what's so funny is that in my, I literally have a brand new one and I just don't want to use it yet because I'm still so attached to my old one. <laughs> like getting rid of a car. <laughs> I know, I just, you know, 80% right. of it's still good. It's fine. <laughs> so uh, Karen asked, uh, my dog doesn't like sprays. Any alternatives? She, and she's a, got a long coated, like an Aussie coat dog if she doesn't like sprays um you could always you know moisten your hand so if you put it in your hand you know and go this way and then rub it over her uh top coat and, and things like that it won't be quite um you know as damp but it will be better than just brushing dry coat okay good all right um okay so what is the best way to brush coats Right, double coats, short coats, single coats, and rough coats. I mean, what is the best way to actually get good hair out and and be gentle with them? Okay, so I'm gonna borrow Savage. We're gonna pretend that Savage is all of the above. <laughs> so <laughs> you're gonna love that. <laughs> well, that way you can kind of you know see at least the technique. It won't be quite the same, but it will give you a visual representation of. of what I'm talking about because just because I'm telling you it does not mean it makes sense. That's like the story of my life. I tell stories and I'm just like, you get that? I'm like, nope, no idea. 
So while you're getting your uh, your your dog, um, Audrey was asking: Is the Atami 270 spray good for static uh, static flyaway? Static you get because of dry. So mm -hmm. being a very you know oil based two phase hydration spray, it is phenomenal. Okay. Like it's yeah. It's awesome. And I use it on all dog, all dog coat types. So even if I'm about to, you know, brush out my Vishla, use a little, not quite to the breed standard. <laughs> no, I, a little I, dark. A little dark do, with that. I know, right? Yeah. Um, don't tell so, the breeder. <laughs> <laughs> so Judy, um, uh, Liz had said there that she has the Miracle brush, but the and is, is another alternative for the Miracle. She said they're kind of the same if you can't find the Miracle. Yeah, right. They're kind of the same, and it depends on how much undercoat your dog has. Like probably the um, undercoat rake is probably good for the lab, the Miracle one, because I use it for my lab, and it works really well. So, Jordy, move, please. All right. Take it away with your Vishla, Liz. <laughs> All right, so again, this is the Vishla. We're pretending. Um, I have spritzed him with my H270. Uh, any dog that I go to brush, I always spritz them first. It doesn't matter. I don't care if it's bald. I will spritz them first. Um, again, I'm going to take my curry comb. I can either kind of slowly push and pull through, or you can kind of just fluff it up in circles. Um, I do strongly recommend sticking with the lay of the hair. Most dogs okay. are more comfortable with it. Okay, when that er erector follicle is pushed opposite, think of like a, a ridgeback. They have that opposite hair. That's what makes them a ridgeback. If you're trying to lay that down, you're going opposite of their hair follicle, and it can be uncomfortable for some dogs. So if you have a dog that is not comfortable for brushing, try and ensure that you are going in the, in the way that the hair lays. So for this Vishla, of course, it's gonna be laying nice and flat, coming this way. So again, and you can hold that skin tight. So with, with this guy, you can come and pull it, and then that way the skin is not going Cause that's not comfortable either. You know, if I'm trying to sit there and brush my own hair and I'm yanking on my skin, I'm gonna be mad at myself. Right. <laughs> You know, so don't don't hesitate to hold that skin nice and tight. You know, get that hair out of there, all that jazz. And you can actually, and I don't know if you just saw it come off him, but let's see if I can. You can kind of almost. I don't know if you can see it, but that's actually some undercoat. Uh, poodles can carry undercoat, and people don't realize that. So I brushed him. I fluffed him. Now I'm going to come in with my bristle brush to lay down, get any of that loose hair off. Argon oil first. Um, if you have the spray, you can even spray again because that is oil based. I just love the way this smells. My clients that I use this on their dogs are like, oh, what is that smell? And I need it. And I'm like, I know, it's fantastic. <laughs> so oil them up really nice and then come in and then just kind of give them a once over. Make sure you get their legs. You know, with a smooth coated Vishla, you know, you can actually come in and, you know, get their face and their head, all that, you know, and it just shines them up beautifully, even if you're not using oil. You know, it really makes them look sharp. So then there's my Vishla, <laughs> freshly groomed. Um, now, let's not say. Not whining like a little girl, though. Right for you, Um so now let's say that I uh, now have a German Shepherd, okay? So for a German Shepherd, you can come in with a curry comb and do the same technique. What I love to do, and Nancy can attest to this, that I do one heck of a D-shed. Yeah, you what do. I, what I love to do, I come in with my curry, and I do my doo-doo-doo, -do -do. you know, I do this, just like with the Vishla. I come in with my awesome slicker brush, and then I slicker brush through all that. I get the pants really well. Um, their pin bone is on that back. So here's their hip bone, here's their pin bone. Double coated dogs love to have a copious amount of hair 
built up on that pin bone because they mm -hmm. sit there. That's where the weight and the friction is when they're sitting. So you get a lot of that matted in. So I really make sure to get, you know, that area broken up and wait for it. Come back with the curry. Because now I've gotten deeper into that coat and I've kind of stimulated more of that follicle and I've woken up that skin. And I'll come by again for a quick once over, break all that up again. Then I'll come in with, for a shepherd, I would actually come in with this guy. Um, you don't use this on a poodle coat. It will rip up this coat. So I'm not going to use it on him. Um, but this is fine. So then I come through and what I've broken up and those clumpies, I'm going to pull out. And again, guys, I'm telling you, nobody believes me that poodles should. Do you see it? Yeah. They have undercoat. I actually will use these on my poodles. And then you just want to pull that out. So we've got all them pulled out. Actually, that's quite a bit undercoat today. And then I come in with my comb. Okay, fine, you know, wide side first, then the fine side. And with a, let me get him actually combed out first. Okay, so he's good. So now if this was a shepherd, I would stretch the skin out really good and I'd lay my comb in flat and I'd pull that through and that's where you're really gonna get a lot of that undercoat and stuff out. And you can see even, I don't know if you can't, can you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then when I flip it around to the fine side and do the same thing, I'm going to get even more. Jordy, quit. See that? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then once I'm done, even with a, with a shepherd type, I'll spritz. And then I'll come in with my bristle and I'll just clean all that up. And even on this dog, I mean, all that roughing, I don't know if you guys can see quite, you know, even on a coat like this to close up that cuticle. Do you see how that actually brightened him up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he looks much darker now. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I, and I don't say all these, I mean, this is genuinely what I do every day. Even on like my ears and stuff, I'll spritz and I'll use a bristle nylon uh, that has the nylon bristles and the bristle bore for my poodle coats. It's phenomenal. Mm. That's a lot of brushing. <laughs> but it's effective. Yeah. So, um, Too bad you can only make a comb, make that comb go through a shepherd like twice before you have to empty the comb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that's the truth. And then for our long dogs, what I'm going to do, because his hair is quite short, um, I want to do a little bit more effective of a demonstration for our longer coated dogs, especially because right now, Groomers are not essential, okay? It is on pet owners to make sure that they are maintaining that long, beautiful hair. I know I personally hate shaving dogs. I do not like it, and I'm really hoping that I don't have to shave a bunch of dogs when I get back to work. Um, <laughs> I just, I love dogs. I love them to be cute and fluffy, and I just don't love short haircuts. So. If you're, if you're not brushing at home, like, you're probably going to get a little naky dog. But, you know, that's okay. Hair grows. Not the end of the world. Yeah, it's your turn. Come on. Let's go. Um, but I'm going to use Jordy because he is a little bit uh, longer. And then he is actually a disheveled mess. Little cobbler's child. So I'm gonna come in, this is my long coat of dog. He is dirty, he has been, he got wet, so he's really crumbly. Um, I don't think he has any mats, actually. Oh, no, there's one. His armpit's matted. <laughs> but for your long coat of dogs, you really wanna make sure you go do a good spritz. Guys, this is where this is worth $60, okay? This is gonna brush this out in like no time flat. And I'm going to show you the dif difference between the longer time and a shorter time slicker brush. But what you want to do is called line brushing. So you just want to pick a spot. I'm going to start in the middle of his hock. And I'm just going to pull up. And if you listen, 
you can actually hear when it's no longer tangled. Okay, that's what it sounds like when it's clear of the big tangles. You hear the difference? Mm -hmm. It's very subtle, but if you actually listen, the hair will tell you when you've gotten all the big tangles up. Oh. Isn't that something? <laughs> but we've got that brushed out in no time flat. And then you're going to come in with your comb. And then you just want to make sure you're hitting every section. That comb, and you can see that can glide right through. Okay, it's stuck right there because we didn't, we didn't actually brush that part. Oh, wow. But look at the difference between this and this. This is the line of what we brushed. Mm -hmm. See how crumpled and yucky and how soft and fluffy? Yeah. So on a dog like Jordy, if I'm gonna brush out this whole leg, he'll obviously stand here. He's a retired show dog. He's not gonna go anywhere. He's not gonna do anything, okay? For your pet dogs at home, if they're running away when you're trying to brush them. <laughs> what? <laughs> they, don't, they don't do that. What? <laughs> you can use a slip lead. Um, you know, to hold on to them so they don't go anywhere. Um, if you have a bigger dog, putting them on a doorknob. So if I've got him hooked to a doorknob, I have both of my hands um, and he's contained, um, you know, a spouse that's sitting around watching TV, you know, just hand it off. You know, they're not paying attention anyway. So just <clears> hand <throat> them something, they're going to hold it. <laughs> you know, um, but typically elevating them. So I've got the dogs on a grooming table an ottoman, a washer, a dryer, a laundry room counter. I'll be honest, if you come to my house, I've probably brushed a dog out on my kitchen table. Why not? You know, it's up there. But to finish brushing this out, you want to make sure like all this crummy stuff in. You hear that? Isn't that so cool? You can actually hear how when it's not tangled anymore. But you always want to make sure you come back in, you know, with that comb. Because if you're not getting a comb all the way down to the skin, so with him, I can come in and I can part that all the way down to the skin. You see that? Mm -hmm. yep. That is untangled, well brushed hair. Turn. Where on this side, I can, I can kind of get it, you know, there. I brushed him actually for a demo not that long ago, so I can't be too hard on myself. But, you know, when you get into some of this, like especially up here where it's really dirty, like trying to part it down to the skin, you know, it's all clumped. Like this right there, that's a mat. That's, you know, that's if I try and, that's in there. That has to be brushed out. But to show you the difference really quick and why I really emphasize spending the money on a good slicker brush. Okay, that leg, the other leg we just did, we could basically have that brushed out in about five minutes, very quickly. Um, you saw that hawk area we brushed out in no time flat. If I take my, again, I love this. I'm not saying I don't love this slicker. It's my favorite. But for a brush out on a dog like this, if I'm going to sit here, and I'll bring you this way, just because, again, I don't want to, you know, make sure you're mindful of how your dog moves. If I'm trying to, like, hold him up like this or stretch it out, or your dog's not going to be happy about it. Um, as you can see where I've messed around with his leg, and he's like, hey, lady. But to sit here and try and use this, which is much more of a finishing brush, You can see it's going to struggle to get through that hair. I'm going to have to brush less hair at a time. And then even like here, trying to get where if I have my longer, more workhorse slicker, I can brush out this whole leg and his toes. Make sure you are brushing your toes on your fluffy footed dogs. 
You know, if you can't get a comb through those toes, they're probably matted. All right, so brushed, and then if we come in, and you can see, even on that shorter hair, these shorter time slickers just take a lot more mm -hmm. effort and energy. And I'll be honest, who really wants to sit at home and brush their dog? <laughs> Maybe you. No, oh no, I don't. I don't. Actually, funny. Um, I don't brush my dogs. <laughs> my rule in my house, because I have show coats, is if I have to brush my dog, it means he needs a bath. Oh. Think, think about that. <laughs> it's a oh, lot of bathing. Yeah, yeah, okay. um, but again, most importantly, when you are brushing your long coated dogs at home, their body, don't worry about it, okay? Their legs, that's where most of your magnet's gonna come in. This dog, I can't get a comb through his leg to save my life right now, okay? If, if I don't do something about that, and that's, you know, most of our situations at home with a lot of our kiddos, that's gonna have to get shaved out the next time if he was going to, you know, if, if I wasn't his owner. Mm. So you just wanna make sure that you are keeping up you know, with your brushing and your combing and make sure that you can just get that comb to slide right through that hair. You know, that is so important. I can't stress that enough. Comb, comb, comb some more, and then comb a little bit more. So, Liz, more. <laughs> so Liz, is a slicker brush the best thing to get a mat out? Or yeah. Just so, what I, oops. Everything's fine, we're fine. What I can do real quick, because this dog actually will um, lay down on his side for us. I just have to think about how I'm gonna do this. Um, so where his armpit is matted, I don't know, let's see, get you guys. I'm gonna try and do this. Oh, I forgot my tools. Stay. Stay. <laughs> He's like, I'm, I shouldn't be forced to do this anymore. My career's over. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to spritz it with my lubricating spray, you know, whatever that happens to be. I, I love this for dematting too. Um, and just to show you, let me see if I can get you in just a little bit more, actually. That's my face, nice and close for you guys. <laughs> there we go, how's there that? There you go, good? that's good, yep, Perfect. good. So you can see that this whole armpit area is very matted. You see that, how I can't part that? It just looks like a disheveled mess. Yep. I'm gonna start right in the middle and I'm just gonna pull just a little bit at a time. And again, if you're listening, you can hear how that slowly untangles. And see how I'm working that section. I have it split out and I'm just working that until it sounds detangled. Hear that? Do you hear how that changed? And then yeah. I'm gonna pull the next little bit. You're just taking tiny little bits of hair at a time. Yep. And then same thing, you know, because I started in the middle and I'll, I'll do it again. And then once I think I have majority of it out, sorry, but then I'm going to come in with my comb. And you can see there's that little bit of hair in there that kind of broke off. I know it's sensitive. Armpits are sensitive areas. That's why almost any time I have a pet dog, that has an armpit mat where he's currently tangled, which it's literally, and you can see it's literally right at that elbow, all that right there. I'll shave it out on a pet dog. You don't need that hair. There's no reason if you've got like a, a knot in your armpit like this to, to pull and yank at it. Um, so the, if, the dog does look very French that way. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, look at me. Um, don't fall off the table either. 
Um, if they're standing, so if you can't get them to lay down when you're doing it, to get that elbow, you can just pull that skin out. You know, kind of twist it a little bit and then you can do it that way. But again, I promise you I, I'm going to shave it out anyways. So, you know, use that knowledge of how to brush out a mat on something that, you know, your leg, your body, and ear, things like that. Um, don't worry about, you know, actually, you know, dematting an armpit because it's it's uncomfortable for your dog. So, um, Liz, uh, what do you recommend um, the that brush too for long leg feathers and shoulders and all I, that? Everything. Okay. Everything. There is nothing except like a like a Vishla type dog. You don't need this at all. Shepherd, Lab, Poodle, Maltese, everything. I mean, take it upstairs to the kitchen. I'm sure you could find a good use for it there too. I mean, I literally <laughs> love this. It is my absolute favorite. So, and uh, somebody asked about if that spray could be used on cats. It she can. has a, a long yes. hair. She has a long haired senior cat, um, so he gets matted. So she asked if you could use that spray on the cat too. Yes, absolutely. Actually, what's fantastic about um, Eve San Bernard's products, and I brought the certificate in here for you guys, um, they are actually one of the only brands that are certified to be a safe pet cosmetic. Oh, which the only, I can tell you it's the only brand in the U.S. that is certified pet safe. Think about that. That's kind of scary. That that blue spray is that same brand? Yes. From, you, can, you can get them... That from Carol uh, Patton was asking about that. Yeah, you can get it through them yes. as well. Yes, and if you if you get nothing else, okay. get that. You're gonna love it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, I think we're gonna come to the topic that I know most people want to know most thing most about, which can be I think the most difficult for for everyone um, is nails. Yes. So. Can you first talk about tools? Uh, I know we have like scissor cutters, we have guillotine cutters, uh, we have Dremels, we have diamond tip Dremels. Can you sort of talk about what's best? Yes, so um, as far as nail clippers go, I recommend um, basically this style. Um, right. Even for a cat, you don't like the little tiny, like, like almost like cuticle scissors, but you know, I yeah. don't like those even for a cat. There, there's not enough leverage. It tends to smush the nail, which is quite uncomfortable for the animal, even a cat who doesn't have very thick nails. Um, I do not recommend guillotine style. Um, again, the way it, you know, cause it comes in like this, it literally crushes the nail. There's never been a guillotine style of nail clipper that I have been willing to use. Okay. Yeah. So for, for what that's worth. Um, this is actually my favorite style. I have probably 30 of these clippers. Um, they're sold by Groomers Mall, which is a, a grooming supply company. But the nail clippers you can get as an everyday person. And they're, they hold an edge, fantastic. The size is great. This size is even fantastic for big dogs. They're very sharp um, and they're quite inexpensive. I think they're $12. I don't know off the top of my head, but I mean, I get like three of them for 30 or something like that. I, I forget exactly, but they're very affordable. Um, but again, you have to order it. But you know, if, if you see something like this style at, you know, at a box mm -hmm. store, that's you know, probably fine. Mm -hmm. How long do those stay sharp for, Liz? I mean, how many, you know, if you if you only had one or two dogs at home, how long would one of those last before you should replace it? Probably a year or two, depending on frequency. If you're doing your dog's nails once a month, you'll probably get about two years out of them. They are stainless steel, and, and again, they're they're quite sharp. Um, like if I were to try and, you know, cut my I, you, I'll we'll do that. skin off, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, no, they're, they're quite sharp. Um, Miller's Forge is a brand that might be available at PetSmart, Petco type companies. Um, Chewy has those. Yes. Another fantastic brand that would be a little bit, you know, probably more accessible to, to our, our everyday audience. Um, but another fantastic brand that, you know, will last mm -hmm. you 
longer than just kind of whatever is on the store shelf. Yep. Um, uh, um, a couple. Uh, Allison asked, "When do you would you use the argan oil before or after using clippers? Probably after, right? After. Yep." After, yeah. The argon oil um, is a finishing touch. So that's going to seal in everything that I've done and, and be kind of a finishing touch. Okay. And then um, I think uh, Cheryl and Audrey had the same question. What do you use for trimming the fluff between the toes for the uh, toenail? And uh, Cheryl was asking about um, um, how do you keep the – the hair from getting caught on in the Dremel, if you use the Dremel. The so nail when, when we do our nail demonstration, I will cover what to do with the hair fluff. Um, that's actually a big reason I brought Jordy in so I could show, because if you have like a Border Collie or a Golden that's got all the Grinch feet, um, with a rotary tool, it will catch the hair and it will be a disaster. So we will cover that um, in just a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay, cool, because that's... Um, because uh, we have we have uh, nails are a big topic usually for most of everyone. That's why we left it for last because we figured we'd. <laughs> right. And I know we had a, Mari had a question early on that talked about sort of trimming up the feet and the, in between the, the pads. So if you could talk about that as we talk about doing nails, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah I figured right. we'd hold you guys hostage. Otherwise, you'd listen to nails and run off. <laughs> Well, the nails is a nails is a big hue. It's a it's a deal mm, for yes, um, it is. for a lot of us. Like my shepherd, the great whatever thing you use, they're great with the with the clippers. They're great with the Dremel. They're great with all of it. My lab, not so much. <laughs> um, so, as you've experienced firsthand, so um um I, I did teach her to use a scratch board. And and I can do some clipping, but Dremel probably not going to be ever something we're going to be able to use. So well, and some it's the noise. I mean, you know, this one actually um, is fairly quiet, uh, and this is actually a new one that I uh, just got at Walmart. It was like twenty five bucks. Um, but yeah, oh, so this is a Dremel. This is also one of the tools. Um, you know, you had mentioned diamond heads. So most of your Dremels are going to have you know, the yeah. sandpaper tip, um, which is fine. Most people can get away with a sandpaper fine, no problem. I personally use a diamond tip. And the reason I do that, uh, let me find my work journal. I love them. Once I found those, I never go back to sandpaper. <laughs> the way that this is, so this, move ooh, it over. Right, there we go. Um, <laughs> This shaft doesn't grab hair the same way uh, that this one will. So if you've got, you know, your Grinch feet and this is spinning, this is going to grab and rip at that hair. This is the Whitman's brand um, diamond head made in America, USA. This one's probably one of the originals um, and it lives in my mobile grooming truck. Uh, it's not mine. It's my company's. But um, so it's it's seen you know, better days, but it is just as effective as the day that I got it. Um, this one is probably, I think this one actually might be brand new. I found it when I was unpacking. Um, <laughs> who knew? <laughs> but yeah, so I always say if you are, if you regularly do your dog's nails, invest in a quality American made Dremel head diamond Dremel head. Um, there are a lot of knockoffs that are following what Whitman's is doing with their Dremel heads. Um, you can see this is ugh, opposites. This is actually rounded um, in the diamond heads that you can get at the store that are like the sandpaper. The edges are sharp. Rotary tool, sharp edge. Yeah. Not a good combination. What so, can possibly go wrong with that, right? Yes. And I and even some of the ones that are geared toward professionals, I don't feel that they're safe. This is the safest diamond head on the market. Um, it is expensive, it is an investment, but I will tell you right now, it is cheaper than a vet bill using a lesser quality equipment. 
Well, and it takes a lot to, to dull those, those diamonds. So they yeah. last forever. I, like I said, I've had this one probably since they came out five or six years ago. And it's going, it's, yeah, I use it every day at work on every dog. Um, okay, the other equipment that you need, and I strongly recommend, oh, 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 there it is. Okay, if you're going to be trying to do your dog's nails at home, there's a few things in life that I can say with certainty. And I am certain that if you choose to do your dog's nails at home and you do not have a quick stop, you will probably quick a nail and they'll run around on your white carpet and it will be a mess. <laughs> So when you're at the store, if you're getting your nail clippers or anything like that, have quick stop on hand. Um, most likely if you have it, hopefully it'll go great and you won't need it. But as everybody in life knows, the things that you don't have and need, you, you typically need them right away. Um, Amazon, PetSmart, anywhere will typically sell quick stop. Um, to apply it, you can either Lick your finger and put some of the powder on your finger and then dab it onto the nail. Or what I like to do is I'll dump a cap full and then I'll stick the nail into the cap full so it helps coagulate the nail a little bit better. This is caustic, so if you get it on metal, it will rust it. So make sure if you spill any that you do clean it up well. Um, Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I yeah. Metal it'll rust things out. Like, like if, like I hand strip our terriers. If we get sharp knives, we stick them in quick stop to dull them out. Huh. Oh. So make sure you do clean it up well if you do spill anything. And I spill. I spill. <laughs> All right. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you guys positioned. For the main event. <laughs> now, now that the opening act is over. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is Savage. Uh, I actually was using him to test how the video looked earlier. So these nails, um, these nails have been filed. This last nail has not. Okay, so this guy is still long and needs to be trimmed. These guys are trimmed. Okay, now what I recommend is if your dog's nails are quite long, as his are, he's, again, a cobbler's child, I do recommend clipping first mm -hmm. and then filing. If you try and file for too long, there's friction, it gets hot, it gets uncomfortable. So if they are long, clip them first. He's got black nails. Unfortunately, I don't have any dogs with light nails, so everybody has black nails. So I do apologize. It's a little bit easier if you have a dog with clear nails because you can kind of see where the quick is. Um, on a black nail, you can kind of kind of see on the underside a little bit where, you know, you know you can clip that. Yeah. I don't even know if you guys can see it. I can't exactly see what I'm doing. Um, so you can start there and just... Just do it. The best advice I can tell you is if you're gonna clip a nail. Now this dog gets his nails done, no, not right now. They're really, really long for him. Um, but if I'm sitting here and I'm just like, Ugh, and you can see he's pulling away. If you are not sure and you're like, and you're, <laughs> stop it. And if you're trying to decide what you're gonna do, they're gonna get nervous. Okay, so if I'm going to come in and I say, all right, I'm going to clip this nail, just do it. Because if you kind of get halfway through and stop, that is worse than if you just quick it. If you just come through and get it done really fast, and I, you can see, what did I do? You see that little speck of blood somewhere? Yeah. He didn't react. Think about that. You know, even though I've done just the tiniest little bit to show you guys, if you just come in and just do it, it's like ripping off a Band-Aid. So even if you do end up quicking them a little bit or a lot, 
if you just get it done and over with confidently, it will be a better end result. Always try not to quick your dog, but if you're gonna come in and you're gonna do that nail, just clip it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes. Because if I come in and I only half cut a nail, so like that guy there, and let's say that's quicked, you can't stop the bleeding. It's uncomfortable for them. It can be painful because it's hitting on that vein. It's far better just to come in, just do it. That's the best advice I can give you when it comes to nail clipping. You probably will at some point hit their quick and they will bleed, okay? You try your best not to. You never, you never purposely want to do it, but it does happen. Even for me as a professional, I do a lot of nails every day and every now and then, you know, you can see they'll get a little bit of blood. So when you go to put that quick stop on, like we talked about, and again, I emphasize the fact if you do it quickly, they're really not going to notice. You just come in. I've got it. I'll put a little bit more in there. Got my quick stop in there. I'm going to wipe the blood off a little bit first and then just stick it in there. Look at the, no big deal. No big deal. He's not traumatized. I'm a little traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> but you We're know usually what more traumatized than the dog is, but. Ex but exactly, you know, and that's where I really just want to emphasize, if you're doing this, I just do it. You know, so many dogs are ruined by just the apprehension. And that's true even in the way that we train our dogs. You know, if, if we are not confident and sure, how can they be, right? So now that we've got them clipped, we've got one more. So we've got them clipped, then we're gonna come in with the nail file. And I know you're a good boy. He's my kisser, he will kiss me to death. There's a couple different ways. So normally on a pet dog that I'm grooming um, that I don't know, I have them, I can do this on an angle. I have their leg under them and I'm holding them into my body with my shoulder and arm, okay? So that I can come in and file the nails this way and take the other front foot and file it this way. And I'm still again holding them between my arm and my chest. And then I can come in for the back leg, file, file, file. And you can see I will support, you know, their back end as I pick up that other leg. I'm never just gonna pick up a leg and hope for the best. Okay, I provide that support, pick up that leg, let them settle, file, file, file. Okay, even if you're clipping, you can see I'm supporting that leg all the way underneath. My arm goes this way, so I'm holding up this whole dog and supporting him. There's no weight, no kicking. If he is pitching a fit, as some do, pull him in just a little bit tighter. As they relax, release a little bit of that tension. Think about it in the way that you train a dog to walk on a leash. You know, if they're pulling on it and you keep releasing them to pull harder, they're gonna keep doing it. But if you hold them back and they're trying to get you know, to the dog across the street. And if you stand there like a tree, they can't go anywhere. Once they settle down and you, then you continue going when you've softened that leash pressure. It's essentially the same idea when it comes to handling for nail trims. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense to some of you, but it, it does. So Liz, when I, I, I've had the last two Vish Liz, I don't know, it must be a breed thing that they hate nails. Um, right. So I tried to go really slow and we would touch a foot and give a cookie and touch. And that went for like six months. And by the time, right, I just, I'm like, we have to do these nails on a regular basis. And I think the biggest thing for me that I found is if you grab a foot and you, and they pull and you let it go, right. It makes it so much worse for just doing the holds like you were talking about. And then finally they are like, Oh, okay, fine. And yeah. it makes it go so much faster. Yeah. Dogs are very intelligent. Okay. If they know they can win, they will. It is far better from a young age to kind of teach them, you know, first off to be handled, avoid the problem altogether. Certain breeds, Vichos especially, <clears throat> four, 
just hate their nails. It's or, just some breeds are just notorious for not liking their nails. Um, and I just say, just, just make it as pleasant as possible and as quick as possible. Um, and let them throw their tantrum. You just, sometimes you just gotta sit there, hold it, you know, hold it and just sit and wait and wait. And the minute they stop, yeah, good job. Quick, 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 boom, boom, boom done, let it go. Doesn't mean you're always gonna get all of the done perfection, all that. But sometimes it's picking your battles in a, in a, in a appropriate way. But I will tell you, if you have a dog that goes to the vet that needs three, four, five people, your dog will just continue to escalate. He will continue to fight being manhandled, essentially. Um, there are very, very few dogs that I can't do by myself. And that's usually because if I can't get it done, one of us will get injured and I will not injure myself and I will not injure an animal. Um, so we'll get to the filing part. So I'm going to go over that. Um, the big thing is when it comes to filing, remember this is rotating. This is going against a nail. There is friction. It will get warm. So you don't want to hold it in the same place very long. You kind of want to, you know, if this is, oh, come on. If this is, you know, I'm holding the tip of the nail, I'm essentially going to come around it and soften the entire circumference. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. So instead of just like holding it in one place and waiting for it to file down, I'm kind of moving it and shaping the nail. Um, by kind of doing a circumference around the nail, it will also be less sharp, which is really what we're trying to achieve when we're filing a dog's nails. Excuse me, sir. Come here. Good boy. Good job. All right, so I don't know if you'll be able to hear me talk over this, um, so I'll just kind of show you, and then if we have questions, you know, I've got a lot of feet, tons and tons and tons of feet, so we can always find some more feet. All right. So again, I'm gonna finish this foot so I don't forget. Um, again, these are already done. This one is only clipped. Oh, and this file is from Walmart. It's a uh, hyper tough. It's like 25 bucks. I'm actually quite impressed with it. The Dremels that are like this are like $75. So yeah. I would mm -hmm. recommend just grabbing one of these bad boys. Oh, and the other thing is, so a dog, and then I want to cover this before I forget. So if I'm grinding this dog's nail and this is on, what is right by there? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So if your dog does have long hair or long ears, um, you know, either use a ponytail, scrunch it up, or do something to get that out of the way. Him, I extend his front foot out so he's not by his ears. Um, but again, this will grab hair. So you just want to be very careful and very mindful. So, oh, do the one. So again, I'm just gonna rotate around that nail. I can push that foot, you know, kind of push that toe out to get it away from the other ones. And since I've clipped it, I'm not taking a whole lot of length off. I'm just trying to get those sharp edges. Okay, so can you kind of see how that oh, yeah. black dot right there, that's his quick. You see that? Mm -hmm. And on a dark dog, The closer into the quick bleeding, you'll get that little bit of white, like gelatinous type looking stuff. You go mm -hmm. much more than that and you're gonna start getting a little bit of blood. The nice part is if you're filing and you get blood, it's a lot less than if you, you know, go through and cut them with the nail clipper. But mm -hmm. do you see that? Yeah. That's yep. as far as you wanna go. You do not wanna go any farther than that. So again, just gonna come in. I know. So again, you can see that black dot starting to come through on the underside of that nail. So I'm gonna take a little bit more off that top bit. You see that? This one, since we did get that vein out a little bit, I'm not gonna actually hit the front of it. I'm just gonna do the sides. 
just to take those sharp edges off. So you can see that quick stop is still there, but that sharp edge is now taken off. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the next one. And I basically push that foot out, push that toe out, and I'm holding firmly. I mean, this is not his favorite angle to do that, to do this with, and I, and I know that. This is a personal dog of mine, but that's what happens when a groomer owns you. You have to get used. Oh my for, God. For the, I know, the poor thing. But again, I'm just gonna hit those edges, take some of that length off. And there we go. Would you trim, would you trim the dog's uh, like of uh, hair between the nails first before doing the nails? If uh, my dog has short feet like this, no. So you're again, your short coated dogs, um, shepherds typically don't have enough hair to be too worried, but your goldens, border collie, shih tzus, cavaliers, anything with hair on its feet, I would trim first. So we're gonna do our longer haired dog, if he would get on the table. Yeah, okay, come on, come on, good job, good boy. So Jordy has um, longer hair, and I'm gonna show you the way that you can do this at home. So if I were, you know, gonna trim his feet, cause you can see he's got, you know, some toe hairs and stuff. Yeah, Get those pulled out for you. Let's, pre let's pretend they're a little bit longer. Um, I would use a clipper and I would get this really shaved out. Okay, but at home, if you're gonna try and trim, you know, the furnishings, uh, you know, you've got your hawk hair, your pad hair, things like that. Is this one better? We're making do with the hair we have, guys. So let's pretend this is all big and fluffy. You want to tighten up that paw. Okay, you don't want that paw open and things like that. You kind of want to smoosh it together. Pull that hair up and away from that pad. Take scissors. Now obviously try and get sharp scissors. If you're just using your kitchen scissors, they may not cut. Um, <laughs> and you're going to just want to lay them. You see that? Mm -hmm. And then just very gently trim that off. Okay, so it's flush with that pad. If, oh, somebody's helping. Um, if for whatever reason you are not comfortable doing this, then don't. You don't ever want to cause injury or harm to your dog. Um, you know, if you've got some stuff that's longer, and you just want to kind of clean it up a little bit and, and stay away from that paw, do it. You know, do what you are comfortable doing. Wait. So Liz, pushing those, those feet together, pushing all the, the toes together, are you're, you're sort of helping too to get a good cut and making sure you don't get too close to a pad, right? Exactly. Um, okay. He does a lot of running and walking and things like that. So his pads are, you know, you can see he's got some, some miles on these pads. If you have a new puppy or a dog that, you know, has really soft pink pads, be very careful. Um, again, these are just, they've got miles. They're a little rough. Um, if your dog, again, doesn't, just stay a little bit farther away. So like, you know, instead of going right to the foot like this, you know, maybe you're just going to want to just clean up what you can. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. And then on the front, so he's gonna look silly for a while, but this is because I love you guys, I will do it. <laughs> that or maybe I'll just shave his feet afterwards. Okay, but let's pretend here's my golden, here's my border collie. You know, this is all that long toe hair, right? Mm -hmm. So you just, this is where, even if you take your slicker brush, you know, you brush those toes out, take your comb, really make sure you got in between there. Let's put it back into looking like a toe. So now we've got that combed up, you know, now pretend, you know, a golden border collie, they have the shorter hair, so you would just see the tuft, but you can just come in and scissor that off. So 
let's pretend he's a Shih Tzu now and we gotta scissor some of that off. You can just come in. You know, and clean up around those toes. Because again, if it's long enough, it will go into the Dremel. Mm -hmm. Okay. You definitely do that first before dremeling. Yeah. Even at like, even in my day job, if I'm going to be um, doing a nail trim and they're not in for grooming, if their hair is too long around their, around their nails, I will ask them very sternly if I may trim the feet. It's an additional cost to them, um, which some people don't love, but again, my ultimate concern is the safety of the animal on my table and long hair and rotary tools do not cooperate well together. <laughs> and, and so most people are not going to pay for a, a, pay a, a pair of grooming shears. What types of, I mean, the scissors are too thick, right? I mean, to do most of that. So would you use like a, like a sewing scissor or, I mean, if for an at home, what would be the best at home version? Whatever the sharpest scissor you have is. I mean, you know, even if you just kind of gotta saw away at it a little bit, so be it. But just be very careful and very mindful and, and have safety. Safety is always priority. So if you're sitting there trying to cut at this hair and it's not cutting and he's flailing and then this is going on, just don't do it. <laughs> Take a break, find something sharp, or like even a dull pair of scissors may not cut the hair, but then all of a sudden like somebody's got a wide open wound and you don't know how it happened because they wouldn't even cut the hair and how'd they cut your finger? <laughs> you know, so right. just always, always focus on safety. So then once you have the hair kind of trimmed back, um, regardless of breed, you're still going to have some hair on your longer coated dogs. So that's where you can kind of push anything back and pop that nail out. So you can get to that nail safely while still holding the hair out of the way. Now, a great tip if you're a little less coordinated on trying to hold hair and do nails, which most pet owners are, pantyhose. Take a pair uh, of pantyhose, put your dog's foot in there, break the nails through, and then it's going to hold that hair out of the way and still expose those nails for you. Oh. Do um, they still need those? <laughs> pantyhose? Honey, I wear them every weekend. <laughs> oh, that's right. You do. Find a, find a confirmation handler and they'll give you all the ones with the runs. <laughs> exactly. Um, and another thing now, and I don't know if they still make this, fishnet. So fishnet mm -hmm. stockings, like the arm things, um, those work well uh, too. There's actually tools that are made for groomers that have like a fishnet that we just stick over. Um, I don't I've use found them. like a bag of onions or avocados where they come in that mesh. Me yep. uh, mesh. So it's better than nothing, but no. Right. Um, I always say err, err on, you know, trying to just push the hair yourself. Um, just because it aids in the coordination of what you're doing, um, you know, and, and I don't like a false sense of security. I rather know mm -hmm. that what I yeah. what I'm doing is, um, but again, helpful as you're learning. Yeah. Wow, Liz, this has been pretty awesome. I, this is great. So any and I, I you see Liz's information down below. Anybody have any questions? Anything else? This really was great. Uh, it's amazing. You know, we all need to do it, but so many people just don't, I mean, don't know how. I know I sort of, I never asked a groomer. I just sort of made my dogs um, cut. I mean, they were not pretty for a while, but. <laughs> well, and, it, and it's better now. In my opinion, you know, the more maintenance you do at home for your dogs, the better. It's bonding, you know, it's experience, it's good handling. You know, the reality is I'm only seeing, you know, your dog, I hope every four to six weeks, but there's plenty of people that don't get their dogs groomed that often. I'm not maintaining your dog. It is not my job to come to your house once a week and brush your dog unless you're paying me, which I, I do have a lot of people that do that as well, but it is 
as a pet owner, it is your responsibility to maintain your dog. And everything we covered today really is just good maintenance. It, it, and it's not hard. It takes some, it, there is a learning curve. Okay. Yeah. But it, it's not hard, you know, um, especially if you start from a little tiny baby and, and really, you know, work with them. They have to learn how to be groomed just the same as have they, how they learn everything else, how to sit down, stay. Right. Absolutely. If it's not taught to them, Yep. They don't yeah. know it. It's not a fair yeah. expectation. Yeah, and then unless we, you're a beach left. Yeah. <laughs> unless and you're a beach left. Yeah, and we and we do try to um, teach our puppy uh, people that you know got to get them used to being handled and all that stuff. Especially people who have, you know, uh, long coated dogs. It's really um, it's it's really important that they learn that uh, yeah. piece. Um, yeah. somebody, somebody else had a question. Um, Kathy, the dog, the dog likes to sit when they try to groom him, um, and how to keep him standing. It's like, well, uh, there might be some physical issues why he can't uh, stand up. But what are you, or do you just support him when they're standing, or? So all of my dogs, and and I'm gonna bring you guys back out here a little bit. All of my personal dogs, you can see there's no grooming arm on my table. Poodles, we don't use a ton of grooming arms with, with our show dogs. Um, but for this dog in particular, um, I raised him from a baby. Um, he'll stand for hours and hours and hours. And all I do, if he chooses to sit, Jordy, sit. I train them, you know, so if he's, I wait, I know. So he's sat down and I'm trying to groom him. Uh, Jordy, up. And I'll gently push that back assembly up. Um, if they're continually trying to sit down, I will actually, um, I'll take a comb, you know, and if I've got a dog that really wants to sit, I'll just use the comb to kind of push their belly very, very gently. I mean, don't, don't be rough about it, but if they're sitting, sit, I know, sit. <laughs> you know, rather than if you can't, and he'll he'll stand right up for me because again, he's my personal dog. Um, but sometimes the the cool because the comb is metal on their belly is like woo, so they'll jump they'll jump up and they'll usually stay a little bit. Because, and you can see even him if you touch that, it, he pulls his belly up a little bit. Um, you know, and I'll kind of use because I have a comb always in my hand. So even like, you know, if I need him to you know, turn, I might use a comb as the extension of my hand, but something about, I think the coolness of the comb hitting their belly kind of encourages them a little bit better than a warm hand. <laughs> um, you know, and if they still continue to, to try and sit, sometimes I've got plenty, if it's a medical condition, you just, you work around it, you yeah. know, um, or you actually train them, you know, I, I him, um, uh, down. If I'm, you know, when we're doing their big hair, you know, they're trained for their spray up and all that, and he'll lay down like this for hours. You can see he pops his head right down because he's used to having all this taken care of. Mm. So if you've got a dog right. that really just wants to sit, sometimes maybe you just gotta work around it. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on why they're wanting to sit. They might be uncomfortable. So exactly. Right. You know, and, and again, it's all about training. So with him, let's say I'm done with this side. Jordy, turn. You know, that's yeah. a tra it's a trained behavior. Do we turn? Yeah. And, and with like seniors or older dogs, um, do you ever just sort of do a little bit, put them back and bring them back and put them back, just give them a little bit of a break? Uh, so my thing with seniors, if you're at home, yes, you know, do what you can in the time frame. Um, in my day-to-day -day grooming, I have plenty of, of clients that have senior dogs that don't, that don't love me as their groomer. Um, because in a senior dog, I don't care what they look like. I care that they're happy. I care that they're comfortable and I care that we're safe. Okay. Right. Um, thank you. Ultimately, when it comes to seniors, it is strictly what they will allow comfortably. Cause again, you're dealing with arthritis. So if you're moving them and, and, and trying to clip them, sometimes they're really just reacting out of pain. <laughs> 
you know, and, and, I, and it breaks my heart because I, I have to groom them. I have to, but I know it hurts them. So I am very upfront that when it comes to seniors, you get what you get. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes they're having a bad day. Sometimes it's just the best we could do. Right. You Good. Know? That's nice. All right, Liz, nice. thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, yes, thank you. You will find a recording of this on my Facebook page and the For Better For Work uh, Facebook page. Uh, so if you want to like the review, because there was so much covered. So <laughs> I'm sure that we'll need to... Uh, I know I'll need to review some of it. Um, you so can't thank say you I'm all. Not <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Liz. It was awesome. A wonderful. It was fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. And thank you, everybody.